Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be, it's going to be long and it's mommy related, so I'll give you a chance now if you're not interested in hearing um, what I have to share, then no love lost and look forward to um, a beauty related video on my channel soon. But today I wanted to discuss um, kind of something that's not super common in pregnancy, but it is my story and if I could kind of just help guide somebody who's considering this as well in their pregnancy journey, I figured it was important to kind of tell my story and also do my, I'm 25 weeks, so I was going to do my pregnancy update anyway. So, so I'm in Stella's room because the lighting is so good <laughs> and she's not even here, she's at her grandparents' house swimming. So, um, so I'm 25 weeks uh, this week, maybe I'm 26 weeks, I think I'm 25 weeks, and this is my second pregnancy and with my first pregnancy um, there was a lot of, in the end, there ended up being a lot of medical interventions that took place. Um, I was a first time mom so I didn't really know any better and to be completely honest I trusted my doctor. I liked her, um, I liked her for the reason um, she she was just one doctor in a practice. She wasn't in a, you know, like the 12 doctors in one practice. She was just one doctor. And um, she was from another, she was European, so she had a much more relaxed approach to medicine, which I also liked. Because um, I'm a nervous personality anyway, so I need a lot of reassurance and I need you to just kind of not overwhelm me too much. It just, that's never good. Um, so I did like her, and then, if you guys remember my birth story, um, Stella was born at 37 weeks, two days, and she wasn't done cooking. So even though they say 37 weeks is full term, I, to this moment, do not believe 37 weeks is full term. And my doctor accidentally broke my water, and which could be considered fine, because we were both aware that at that point we considered myself to be full term and then after that was a series of events that caused my daughter to spend seven days in the NICU in the hospital. Um, I don't know how much control I could have had in the situation looking back because at the time I didn't feel traumatized when things were happening. It was only after Stella was born that she started to exhibit signs that something was wrong and her lungs just weren't completely developed and so they took her away and she spent the next seven days in the NICU getting better. But after that, there's a huge domino effect when you bring a sick baby home and your your milk supply is supposed to flourish based on the contact with your baby and I didn't have my baby at home for seven days. Um, I got really bad baby blues when we did bring her home and my hormones were everywhere. So, you know, all is well now and she's three and she's really healthy. But with this pregnancy, I kind of just considered, well, I know I won't go to that same doctor and I, I'll probably deliver at a newer hospital. There's a different hospital out here that's like newer. And that was as exciting <clears throat> as this labor and delivery was going to be. Um, and then I talked to a girlfriend who I haven't even seen in a really long time, but we were talking and she's due any day now with her first baby and she said that she was going to have her baby at home. And I, for some reason, was like, really? Like your first baby? You know, you don't, you're not nervous or anything? And she was like, no, you know, we're just going to do it in our living room. <laughs> and I mean, I always had, I never really considered it. I, when I was pregnant with Stella, I watched The Business of Being Born and I loved it, the Ricky Lake documentary. <clears throat> and so I never really considered doing a home birth. And also I never considered doing a non-medicated birth either. But there was something about the confidence that my girlfriend had in just trusting her body that I had never tapped into before. And also, the idea that I could have a birth that was not meddled with. Do you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't going to be meddled with. And I was in control of that. So, I started exploring what my options were with my birthing. And so I started buying books and I started reading and watching documentaries and I didn't think I had any options out here. I live in the suburbs and these doctors out here don't even do VBACs. Like 
there's no birthing centers out here. There's no, like there are some midwives, but there's not like a freestanding birthing center. So I did start to do some research and I just kind of let it speak to me. And I try to think about like what it is that I want. And what I want is a birth that goes as naturally and as according to God's plan as possible without doctors sticking, pardon the pun, but sticking their hands in during my labor and delivery this time around. Um, so I did start to watch a lot of documentaries. I watched more The Business of Being Born. Um, I read The Guide to Childbirth because of course one of the components of why people go to the hospital to have their baby is A, it's the norm for us as we go to the hospital and we give birth and B, we're afraid of the pain. So and that was me. I was just gonna go in just like I did with Stella and have my baby and get my epidural and that was that. But the more I read about it, um, the more I just kind of like considered it. And then my new OBGYN that I started seeing with this baby, I just, I'm going to title this video, Go With Your Gut. Always go with your gut. And from jump, I never wanted to be best friends with my OB. I never, I knew that wasn't going to be the case. But I went from a small practice with Stella to this big multi-doctor practice. And it's straight up like the DMV. And it's, it's nice enough, but I mean, there are so many women in the waiting room. When I would go in, they would have you sit in another hallway and wait, and you'd see your doctor in the hallway, but they'd be in another room, and then you'd see another girl waiting, and you're like, I'm fourth before my doctor, you know, gets to me. And then they talk to you for five seconds, and then they write all this stuff on a, basically a receipt. And they give it to you and then you walk up to the front counter to make your next appointment. It was just all very like systematic and that left a bad taste in my mouth. And then there was like a series of events that took place at this particular doctor's office where I was like, this doctor doesn't even know who I am. Like they pushed for some unnecessary ultrasounds that I felt they were unnecessary. And for me to think something isn't necessary is a stretch because I'm I have an anxious personality, so I'm always wanting to double check. And even for me, I was like, I don't think that we need to do this. And just really pushing for things, just for what felt like more money out of my insurance. And um, mistaken identity. I'd wa you know, I had an appointment, and my doctor walked in and said something about, "Oh, Shavonda, you're my surrogate mommy, right?" No, <laughs> no. Um, you're you're not you're not the surrogate mommy. I was like, no, I'm gonna keep him if it's okay with you. Like, what what records are you looking at? I'm not a surrogate mommy. Um, so that was like, what? She doesn't even know who I am. Like, she's not really getting to know me as a human. So, a bunch of things were happening where I just did not feel comfortable, and I felt like if I explore the natural side of my childbirth, I feel like I'm not gonna be listened to, and I'm not gonna be heard, and it's not gonna be an intimate, individualized moment between myself and my doctor and my husband. I just feel like I don't know what doctor will deliver me on the day I go into labor. There's nine of you here. And I, I think that was kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back. So we made the decision to seek care elsewhere at 23 weeks, I think, or 22 weeks. Um, my husband and I made the decision to move forward with finding a birthing center and um, not do the home birth. That's a little too off the grid for us, but we wanted to find a place that would support my attempt at giving birth as naturally with as little intervention as possible, I'll say. Because if I need an epidural, trust, I will raise my hand and say, I gave it my best shot, I need the epidural. But in the meantime, I did want to find a place that just kind of embraced what it is my body's going to try and do and embrace the endeavor in which I'm about to take part in. So. We did find a place, and then getting transferred over was a completely different shebang. Um, and what I'll say about that is if you are pregnant and you are not feeling good about your care provider, you are completely within your right to leave. You don't owe anybody anything. They have your records. If you have any kind of inkling that they're pushing for things, or they're not listening to you, you have a feeling something might be wrong and they're not taking you seriously, whatever, you can leave. You can leave. I'm proof of that. I left at 20, like I said, officially 24 weeks. And I have my first appointment with a midwife tomorrow. So I didn't have any gaps in care. My last appointment was 30 days ago. 
30 days later, here we are, no appointment. You have to get your records transferred, which can be awkward because obviously your doctor's office wants to know why you're sending for records to be moved somewhere else. Um, it's up to you what you want to tell them. I, I don't lie. I'm not, a, I'm not a very good liar. <laughs> I'm not a very good liar. So if I try to, um, if I say like, I'm moving, my eye starts to twitch or something. Like, I don't even know. I just, I'm not a good liar. Um, my husband was like, just tell them we're moving. It's fine. They don't need to know like what's happening. I ended up being like, well, <laughs> I'm looking for a natural um, birthing experience. And obviously these doctors can't offer me that. So they have no choice but to be like, oh, okay. But they, I, I, I remember specifically not being able to get a hold of my doctor in the beginning when I had a question. It took me four days to get a hold of my doctor. The day that I officially told them that I am canceling my appointment, I've transferred care elsewhere, thank you so much, that night I got a call from my OB. That night, saying, oh hi, you know, we just wanted to, I, I see this on my desk and I just want to check in with the baby, I really need to make sure the baby's okay. Baby's fine. Haven't seen you in a while. You saw me 30 days ago. It's not like I dipped out on prenatal care. So that was a little awkward, but it's not common to leave, but I felt like it was speaking to me. There was something that just wasn't right. My husband supported it 100%. And I honestly think that I can do it. I think that I've been, much like a lot of us, we, th we just kind of go with the flow, which isn't a bad flow. You go with the flow. You and in the end, you just kind of know that everything is going to be fine. Um, you get your epidural, you get you know, the gown, you check in, and it's all kind of familiar for us. Our, our girlfriends are having babies in hospitals. But for me, I hated being hooked up to an IV. I was so bloated by the end. I hated the catheter. Um, I didn't get my epidural with Stella for like the first nine hours I was in labor. I took a childbirthing class and I kid you not, like the worst things that can happen when you get to the hospital were the first three things that happened when I got to the hospital. My doctor accidentally broke my water and the moment we got the, oh, well first, I was in my doctor's office when she broke my water. So she knew I needed to go to the hospital. So she called the hospital and said, you know, she's coming. Well, I was like, it's gonna be okay. So I went home, I made a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, called my husband, I took a shower. So we didn't really get to the hospital for like two hours. And they were kind of upset like, oh, your doctor called, we were expecting you a long time ago. I'm like, well, we've all got a long way to go because I haven't even had a contraction yet. So let's all just relax. And the second I got in that bed and they put that IV in, they were like, we're gonna break your water, we're gonna give you Pitocin. And I remember being like, let's all just take a big deep breath. It's gonna be okay. They just did not, they were nice, but you can tell they were like, oh, just going to be one of those patients. And then they wanted to put a, a fetal monitor on Stella's head, you know, the with the clips on it. They wanted to do that to her. And I said, no, you're not doing that. I was respectful, but I was like, we just got here. We're not doing that. And then they sent in like a surgical nurse who completely broke my water. And that got my contractions going, which I was fine with, but I didn't get my epidural for a long time and I was fine. I felt it, I breathed through them, I watched TV, I couldn't talk when they got strong. It was everything that the childbirth class said it was going to be. And I remember when they gave me the epidural, or when they offered it, they said like, okay, well, it's almost bedtime. There's going to come a point when you can't get the epidural, so do you want it? And I was just kind of like, sure, why not? And to this day, I always wonder, like, could I have done it without the epidural? Because I had already been doing it without the epidural. So this time around, I just want to be able to walk around. I want to be able to get in the birthing tub. I want to wear my own clothes. I want to eat. I want to drink. Um, I don't want to be tied to the bed. And I just want to try it completely differently than my first experience. Um, and that's pretty much it. That was, it's not personal, personal. Like I don't feel like my doctors in this pregnancy did anything wrong to me. I just feel like I had to listen to my gut and change the course of this pregnancy so much so that my my nursing relationship with this baby can be different that I won't be super foggy and kind of out of it when the baby's born um, and that my milk can come in faster and that you know everyone's just kind of ready to go home the next day versus being sluggish and I just for me personally this is what I feel is right for my family 
Now, there are people, like, I'm still in the process of kind of telling people that this is happening, and I'm getting the reactions that all the books say I'm going to get, which is like, why would you want to be in pain? Why would you put yourself through that? Or, you know, God, like, it's so much more enjoyable with an epidural, which are all valid points, you know, no one, but the pain that I feel like I'm going to experience again, which I did experience the first time, is pain with purpose. And everyone's experience is individual, and it's your own personal experience. There's no judgment whatsoever, considering my first pregnancy was completely medicalized. Um, very, like, typical, all, this, all the proper keywords were used. They threatened me with the C-section. Um, they said she was sunny side up. They broke my water. They gave me Pitocin, blah, 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 blah. Like, worst case scenario. Um, but I'm not super scared of the pain. Um, I have options. I'm not stuck. If I feel like I can't take it, then I'll just go to a different floor where I can get the epidural. <laughs> um, but in the meantime, I'm being given the opportunity that I feel like if this is my last baby, this is something I need to see through and really just do it for me and the baby and my family. So um, that's pretty much what this video update is all about is what's been going on with me is I switched providers at 24, 25 weeks pregnant and I'm very happy that I did. Um, I would have, it would have been another regret in the books if I didn't go with my gut. So you can do it if you're in the middle of a pregnancy, if you're early on, you know you can, you've got the option to do it. If you're further along than I am, um, I think some insurance won't let you transfer after 34 weeks, I want to say, but it's within your right and it's within your power to explore your very own options. So... Um, I will be doing a, my blog update too on my blog, The Modish Mommy. And if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I feel really good. A lot of you guys have been um, asking how I feel, and I feel really good. Um, and I, like I said, I'm 25 weeks this week. I meet with my midwife tomorrow, which I'm very excited about. And I'll keep you guys posted um, on any changes in the meantime. So if you have any questions, like I said, leave them down below. Follow me on Twitter. I'm the Vonda83. Follow me on Instagram. I'm also the Vonda83. And like I said, check out my blog. It's called The Modish Mommy. Thanks again for watching, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.